from Silicon Valley. It's theCUBE, covering Google Cloud Next 17. Hello and welcome to theCUBE's special coverage of Google Next 2017. This is theCUBE's two days of live coverage here in Palo Alto studio. We have reporters and analysts on the ground. We have all the Wikibon analysts in San Francisco have been up there since Monday for the Google Analyst Summit, as well as reporters at the keynote. We're going to be going uh, live to folks on the ground for a reaction and commentary from the keynotes, as well as all the big breakouts and news coverage. Again, two days of live coverage. And we want to put a shout out to Intel for their sponsorship and allowing us to do the two days of in-depth coverage. Really breaking down the cloud and really talking about this new mega, mega trend around cloud service providers where it's a multi-cloud game, which is pretty clear that's happening, and then the sassification of the world with AI, machine learning, really changing the game on infrastructure, uh, software development, this is the digital transformation, this is the made trend, and, and here to help kick off our two days of coverage is venture capital Scott Rainey, who's a partner at Redpoint Ventures, uh, who has a lot of history in network, software, SaaS. Scott, thanks for joining us on the kickoff yeah, here. My pleasure. For our coverage. Yeah, the big story I was Google News is obviously Diane Green, um, great executive. You know, she has a lot of uh, criticism for her, 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 her presentation. Some people were saying, oh, this is a little bit sleepy, but she's got a folksy kind of, I call the Berkeley kind of vibe, but she's super smart. Um, she's a great, cool person, but she came in from VMware, which has a lot of chops in the enterprise. So yeah. it's no surprise that, that Google Cloud is now marching heavily towards the enterprise. They have all the window dressing. You're seeing all the, the check boxes next to, you know, the, the, the sales and marketing, some of the things that they're doing. But at the end of the day, it's an AI machine learning at the center of all this, where data and a new cloud developer or a new developer market has been, em been emerging very fast. They call it cloud native. Uh, you're investing in this space. Uh, give me your thoughts on this, because you guys have to look at the 20 mile stair down the road, look at kind of that five year horizon or, or plus for uh, investments, whether it's early stage or whatnot. But you guys have done a lot with startups that have been successful. Sure. Twilio went public that you're on the board of. You have a lot of investments in there that are doing very, very well. The developers, the opportunities, what's your take as, as an investor writing big checks? Yeah, well, I, I think Google's a really interesting way to start this conversation. Not just the Google Cloud Platform, but Google as, a, as an entity. I think Google is frankly been defining you know, about 10 years ahead of where enterprises are in terms of how they're thinking about building and deploying applications. And so if you look at uh, the Google, the work they've done to actually support the, 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 their internal efforts, uh, these guys then create white papers, the white papers are then disseminated, mm -hmm. and then a whole um, set of industries get kicked off around those. So obviously one of the great examples of that is what happened around Hadoop and, yeah. and that wave. I think what we're in the process of seeing right now is a whole series of inno innovations that are being developed around more kind of cloud native technologies. I think Kubernetes is a great example, yeah. which is um, really the, the outgrowth of work that Google had done around Borg. Um, and so we spent a lot of time thinking mm -hmm. about the work that Google's, the things that Google are working on now, recognizing that's the future of enterprise computing. Uh, it takes, obviously it takes a while to get there, um, but, um, uh, um, but you know, there have been massive yeah. issues. In and it's transformative too, again, I mentioned Twilio, they went public, great service. We saw Snap go public, they're now running on Google Cloud and some on AWS. There's game changing opportunities out there that are going to come out of these unique uh, perspectives that developers yeah. and entrepreneurs might have and say, hey, I'm going to innovate on camera technology, that becomes Snap, which becomes kind of a unique, weird app to mainstream. This is not uh, a, a one-off. I mean, there's a lot happening around, you know, creative young entrepreneurs and, and old. Some some yeah. guys our age, but either way, it's 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 not just apps. It's transformation at the network level, all the way up to the top of the stack. Yeah. What are this, the trends around that? And because what do you I mean? Because machine learning is obviously hot. Yeah. What are you hearing for pitches? What's coming through your door? What are you looking at? You guys see a lot of deals. What's the what's the trends that are coming out of well, that? Well, every pitch we see has machine learning in it. Yeah. Every company <laughs> has become a, a, an AI company at some level. Um, I, you know, so that's clearly a big, a big trend. I think for us, the way that we look at that in terms of investments is we're, we're recognizing that the algorithms uh, are really becoming commoditized at some level. And, and Google with TensorFlow is actually helping make that happen. They're, you know, as we just talked about, democratizing mm -hmm. machine learning at some level. The key there is data. And so when, we're, when we look at these, these companies, we're looking for companies that have a unique or proprietary access to data that they can apply those algorithms to deliver insight. Um, I think one of the more interesting areas of applications around that we're seeing is in the SaaS space. So, um, you know, at this kind of upper level of the, the cloud space, how uh, it's really not enough now to build a SaaS application that just automates a business process. What you have to do is deliver insights. You have mm -hmm. to 
help make the people that are using these applications better at their job at some level. And the way to do that is through things like machine learning. So well, it was interesting. Peter Burr is one of our, our, our head of research for Wikibon pointed out last week when we were covering Mobile World Congress. He goes, it's interesting, you know, years ago when, you know, when I was breaking into the business in the late 80s, early 90s, it was, you know, uh, known processes, unknown technology, and those were automated. Now you have known technology and unknown processes. So getting those insights to get that discovery could really uh, disrupt existing incumbents, big players. So someone can innovate, say, hey, I'm going to innovate on a new process that's that's emerging. This seems to be the big trend that's going on. And, and again, the software model is changing. So how, does, how do you guys see uh, entrepreneurs looking at the AI? And are they that focused on that? Or, or, or do they see that? I mean, what are the key areas? Or do they actually say, hey, I'm going to disrupt this marketplace with this one feature? Uh, I mean, we always hear yeah. the MVP or you know, pick something, do it great. What, what are some of the things that you're we're seeing? seeing? We're really seeing two things in the AI, AI and ML space. We're seeing one is the general kind of platform plays, people that are trying to actually uh, offer machine learning to, to developers in some way, shape, or form. And the reality is I think those are very mm -hmm. difficult businesses to build. I think uh, Google Cloud is yeah. actually extremely well positioned to be able to actually kind of drive that forward for developers. Um, based on all the work that they've done internally and, and the way that that cloud is built and architected. Um, the second are applications around AI and ML, and that's where we're spending the vast majority of our time because we think that that's where the, the, the most value will be, value will be created there. Um, for, for, for folks that don't own a cloud like Google. Yeah. Uh, the thing that's interesting about entrepreneurs is, is it's been a nice thing with cloud. You can get into the game with open source yeah. and build a business. You don't have to get all the, the provision of the data center. That's kind of been talked about. Um, you know, it's not new news. Yeah, you can get up and running. But it's interesting. It was easy to get into the enterprise. And then all of a sudden now, as it gets more um, complicated, well, we're almost going back to the old days of it was really hard to crack the code in the enterprise. It seems to be uh, a lot of new table stakes are emerging. It used to be cloud NATO. We're going to go the enterprise, and you saw Box.net, that became Box, and Dropbox, they're getting into the enterprise very easily. Uh, but now, as we go post, I'd say post-2012, all these new requirements start to rear their ugly head around, it's hard to get into the enterprise. So this is something that Google's certainly challenged with right now, is that they have a lot of tech, mm -hmm. they're serious about the enterprise, that's clear, but to be an enterprise contender and winner and winning deals, how hard is it to win the enterprise? And is that something that you see where uh, the enterprise uh, landscape has changed, where it's harder, or is it easier? What's your What's your thoughts and, and, and the complexities in the enterprise? Yeah, I'm, I I you know, maybe have a different point of view than you do, which is actually I actually think it's it's actually easier now to penetrate the enter enterprise at some level than ever has been before. But it has to start with product, and uh, open source is a an incredible phenomenon that we're seeing that's kind of overtaking the way that enterprises think about building infrastructure today. I don't think you can build an infrastructure mm -hmm. company. Uh, unless you're offering it as open source software. Um, and, and so what we look for in, in terms of investments, and I think what entrepreneurs need to do is think about how do I build products that enterprises will love and then, and then release that as open source and hope to see some level yeah. of adoption. When you see that, then that's, that's the, the best path to actually then being able to go in and sell to them and building, and yeah. building revenue around it. Um, you know, kind of transitioning back to Google uh, and what they're doing with the cloud effort. Um, you know, I think that their approach is actually, it, it's intriguing. Um, I, you know, Diane is a world-class uh, executive in this way. And, and, you know, I think kind of brought in the last big transition that we've seen through the, through the work she did with virtualization. And I wouldn't bet against her here. I think the things that those guys are doing is, is offering a, a pretty compelling set of higher level services now that, that are getting traction with things like BigQuery. I think the um, uh, TensorFlow is obviously very interesting. And then what they've now, uh, announced uh, recently with Spanner as a service. Um, these are all technologies that Google understands and mastered yeah. and um, are uh, very compelling technologies that I think the average developer will want. And they're highly differentiated from the services that are available from the Amazons and the Microsofts of the world. Yeah, and Spanner certainly has got that horizontally scalable mojo going on. Yeah. They still got some work to do outside of MySQL on, their, on the relational database side, which we're watching. But they know that. I mean, they, Google's clearly not saying they're, they're you know, fully baked, they're actually candid. In the analyst meeting, yeah. they were very candid on the security side and very candid on, on some of the things that they know they got to do, and, but they right. are peddling as fast as they can. Um, so I got to ask you the venture capital question um, developers are out there because there was a line, literally a blockbuster as they called it, uh, people around the block on uh, to get in. Google I.O. has had similar traction. Those events are awesome. Google runs great events. They have, yeah. I would call them the, the technology store. People love to go in there and, and see what they have. But as an entrepreneur coming in and going to build on a stack, whether it's Amazon or Google or somewhere else, 
you got to worry about the viability when you have the big gorillas out there. You got Amazon, now Google. What's the formula for success? And what do you worry about as an investor? Because the things you must think about is okay, what's the approach? Where's the viability? Is there a marketplace? Is there monetization? Can they get traction? Can they go beyond the the the, the first three million in sales? Because SaaS, you can get there pretty quickly, yeah. as as it's been discussed. What are the fears that you worry about and what advice would you give entrepreneurs as they start to start really innovating and saying, hey, I'm going to take the democratization of AI and I'm going to do some damage. I want to enter a market. Um, <coughs> these are considerations that you got to think about. And you as an investor, yeah. where's the risk and what's the opportunity? Oh, man. Well, there are lots of risks starting a company. <laughs> I mean, we could, we could talk for an hour about the challenges associated with being an entrepreneur. It's probably the hardest job you can imagine uh, having. I... I you know, I think that the, the first and foremost is you got to build products that people love, and and um, you got to solve a real problem. And so, um, I think for us as investors, we look we look for that. Um, it's different now in enterprise investing in infrastructure than before, where there used to be 10, 15, 20 million dollar efforts required to build the technology, and then you take it to the enterprise, and you would hope that it would sell. Uh, now, uh, you know, with a couple million dollars, you have the ability to actually go out and write some some compelling software, mm -hmm. release it to open source, and see whether or not it gets mm -hmm. traction. Uh, and then, and then, you know, really, then the challenge is figuring out whether or not you can monetize that or not, right? And uh, in, in today's model, that's really yeah. where we struggle. It's ultimately and how you ultimately package this and sell it. Yeah. Um, I think that the primary models that we're seeing are either um, some form of uh, upsell on, on open source, so either service support, open core, or you know an enterprise grade application built on top of the open source. The the other alternative is to deliver it as a service, and we see lots of folks that are taking that open source and saying mm -hmm. we're going to run this as a service. We have a company in Platform Nine that does that for for Kubernetes, but there are companies like Databricks mm -hmm. that are doing that for Spark and the whole uh, data pipeline, and that is potentially a very very compelling model too. Do you have a formula for, uh, uh, or an algorithm for investment? I remember talking to Jeremy Liu way back in the day, and I just saw an yeah. interview about Snapchat, was an investor, and he actually jumped into the stats with uh, Evans Beagle and, and saw the, you know, the, the, the traction because he was skeptical. A lot of people had passed on it, but, you know, that story. But is there an algorithm that you look for, besides the team and being a, an exceptional, you know, team of people, technical yeah. chops and product chops, is there a way that you look at to identify traction in this marketplace? Because it could be, there's a lot of turbulence, microservices, you got Kubernetes, another yeah. Google innovation that's kind of uh, kind of becoming a glue layer, if you will, across services. Is there a way to say, oh, that's got traction, I like that, or here's some benchmarks that I look for for hurdles in, in, in ventures? Yeah, within the within th this infrastructure space, primarily around um, you know, models that are going to be delivered as open source, there's a couple of things that we can look at. We'll, we'll track uh, GitHub stars, and so we'll get a sense from that how the community views this, whether or not this is something they're particularly interested in. Uh, in the level of traction they're getting within that community. It's almost like that, that is almost like a stamp of approval from the technology community that says this is a really cool project, right? And then um, beyond that, you start to look at um, download volumes um, and to understand just how, um, uh, you know, just how widespread the adoption of this technology is. Those are imp imp imperfect yeah. uh, metrics, you know, and, and so a lot of times then it comes back to it's kind of market switching, forces or whatever switching gears and looking at the customers and asking them the kinds of problems they're experiencing and whether or not these technologies have a chance to actually address real um, long-standing challenges that they've had in either building or deploying or running applications and so um, it's it's different than consumer yeah, yeah consumer is a little bit it's easier, easier to measure yeah. and you have um, a, a lot of data consumer has its own challenges and it's very difficult to yeah. kind of predict a priority what's going to be successful but um, um, you know, it's it's. I think it's the good news for us is that with, with high quality teams, these guys typically know where to focus and where to spend yeah. time, and ultimately will be able to. And customer traction is always a great one to look at. I mean, it's other yeah. data points. Scott Rainey, uh, what's new with uh, Redpoint Ventures? Give a quick uh, plug for what you guys are doing, what you're investing in, size of the fund, yeah. how much uh, dry powder you have, as they say. What are you write? You still writing checks? What kind of checks? We are in business, and we're looking for great entrepreneurs. So we have two funds. One is a $400 million early stage fund that focuses primarily on Series A and occasional Series B. And then we have a $400 million early growth fund that is really more an occasional Series B and Series C. We, you know, Our attitude to the entrepreneurs is it's, they should be indifferent as to what fund they're in. We, we treat every investment the same. Really, we just want to be a part of great companies and get a chance to work with great And you guys also sponsored a party last night with the CNCF, the yep. Cloud Native Compute Foundation. Yep. How did that go? What were some of the conversations in the hallway there or in the hallway in the, in the event? I was a social event, but you know, great community to see and see after developing a couple of new projects emerging. They've done some great work. And, and you know, the, the projects that are coming in, I think all 
represent a lot of the foundational work that's going to be required to, to build cloud native applications. The, the first thing we did in this event last night is try to define what cloud native actually is. <laughs> and I think everybody has a different definition uh, for that. What's the uh, most common one? Is there, is there a trend pattern in there? Uh, yeah, the, I think people were saying these are applications that are built to, traditionally built using containers. They're, they're built uh, leveraging microservices and they're, they're built with the, under, yeah. the assumption that the underlying infrastructure is going to be ephemeral in mm -hmm. some way. So, you know, and you have a pony platform. in that game with HashiCorp. So. Uh, update on those guys? Uh, you know, it's a company that's doing extremely well and solving a broad set of problems around um, helping developers build and, and run applications on top of the cloud. And I think what we're seeing there and, and we're seeing kind of across the board is a general um, desire by enterprises to start to think about multi-cloud, to mm -hmm. start to, you know, to understand what it takes to actually uh, deploy applications and run applications across multiple clouds and, and also to be more agnostic about what the underlying substrate looks yeah. like. And you know those are trends that have been bode well for for Google yeah. um, uh, and Microsoft. Yeah, we're excited. We're going to be watching uh, Scott. Thanks for coming on. We're going to be watching that Kubernetes, that orchestration layer that's going on around microservices. It's a hot, uh, I'd say, battleground around innovation. A lot of good things happening there. Great opportunities when there's a lot of turbulence. It's great opportunities to invest. Good luck with your investment, Scott Rainey, partner at Redpoint Ventures, very active in the community. Uh, great VC. Check him out. This is the Cube. Two days of live coverage all day, going to 4:35 today, and then tomorrow. Thursday, and then we're off to South by Southwest again. More coverage, we'll be back with more coverage after the short break.